Get him. Hey you guys, what's up happy people? I'm Robert Arrington, this is Deer Meat for Dinner and we are in Northern California right now. This is like a duck hunting Paradise. outdoor wonderland. And I never knew that, but I met this crazy rascal right here. This is Scott Mueller, he's a part of the California Waterfowl Association. So I reached out to him, I said I wanna bring my wife on an amazing duck hunt. He said, I got you. When you come on a trip like this, it's so important to have the right gear and know what you got. You can't come out here jacking around. We got two minutes. Two minutes. Are you kidding me? You guys want to do a flyby, we'll just shoot them right here. That's you. Yeah. Can you shoot them right. in the Hold on. Get them? Get them. Oh, that was mine! That was mine! Gosh, that was so short. Yep. A few birds there, huh? Beautiful trumpeter swans. We're in this sunk pit right now, which creates a shadow. Everything else will look really lively and bright and beautiful. We'll be in the shadows. We'll roll this over top of us, and then when the moment comes, just roll it back and you're able to take a good shot. Right on top, right on top. Let's kill us. That one couldn't handle it. What? Hey, Alex, right above us. Stop Another pin go. Yes! That's the bird I came oh. to California to kill right Is that there. A That's a bull sprig. I told you two years ago I wanted to kill a bull sprig. Look at that. And people wonder why I shoot those number fours. Kent Fast Steel 2.0 number four. You got a super great tight pattern density, and man, they do the trick. Okay. I'd like to say that I did spot that one, so I get like half the credit. Look at that. What do you think, man? There you go. <laughs> this boy right here, he said he's going to do it. Called the shot, and we're there. <laughs> All right, go ahead. It's the old pointer Phenoma. I just have loved this gun. I, the first time I started shooting this gun was last year after SHOT Show in the snow and mud in Colorado on my first goose hunt. And it, it's, I love it. <laughs> oh. That was teamwork, baby. I am totally taking credit for the first hit. You might have finished it, but I had the first hit. Get him. Ow! God! 
block. If I have a black and blue mark right here, it's because your shell went pow right in my face. Oh, we get three. three oh. I got one. I got one. I know yep. I got one. Yep. I cannot possibly Honey, like this gun. Do I have a red mark right there? Yeah. Look at my red mark. Do you see that? That's so awesome, man. Nothing like a guy with his dog, man. I could come out here and just watch that. Good boy. Now, do you guys realize he's sending the dog 60 yards that way to sit on a specific spot? <laughs> the dog's perfect. I mean, it's as good as they get right there, y'all. Robert, and, place. Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sarah, place. And that doesn't mean the mall. I always thought, I'm going to shoot the 12 gauge because I don't want people to think I'm a sissy. Blah, blah, blah. I would never go back to shooting a 12 gauge unless I had to. The, it is so important to pick a gun that fits you. I mean, this 20 gauge, it has all the power a 12 gauge does. It has all the knockdown power, but it fits me better. So to maneuver a gun properly is like key. Go, 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 go. Oh, I got that one right there, boy. Don't mess around, son. My boy here, Alex, man, he is, uh, he is prime time when it comes to calling these birds. He's got an amazing dog, and this has just been a, a hunt I'll never forget. This is what we've shot a lot of today. These are speckled belly geese. This one is a little bit younger bird. You can tell because it's very light in the belly. This is what they refer to as a tar belly. And this is a much <laughs> older bird and they're extremely smart. That's why you've got to have a fella like this with a perfectly positioned blind, an amazing spread of decoys and knows how to call. Knowledge, but it's, you guys think all these birds just pitch in here. It's crazy, you'll get a solo one and it circles and circles and circles and circles and circles, trying to figure out if it's okay to land. So there's a lot of technique that goes into this. And think about it like this, guys and gals. You don't just make duck sounds or geese sounds. So imagine if you were trying to talk to a lady, if she walked by and you were like, I love you, <laughs> she would probably run away. <laughs> So it's not like you're just making sounds. Even if the sounds may sound right, if that duck's flying away and you were like, I love you, it doesn't really mean anything. You've got to know how to say what you're saying. You're also saying the right things. Like the birds we just killed, they were going away and he fired at them really good. He brought them back around and then he, he came in with a lower tone and coaxed them right in. We were able to make the shots. And then you've got to have a gun that's not going to jam. You know, waterfowling, is probably the hardest hunting in the world on your gear. Um, very few of you have probably ever even heard of this gun. It's called a Pointer Phenoma. It's all Cerakoted. I started out shooting this gun in the snow and mud in Colorado. And I mean, I've never had it jam. It's not, no, amazing gun. And then we're shooting our Kent cartridge, which you guys know about that. Kent is just a great company. I love Jeff. Barry, I love everyone at Kent. That's just a great company. I feel very attached to them. And uh, to come out here, make new friends, kill a bunch of ducks and geese. I get my very first pintail. It's a day I'll never forget. Honey, I think that's the only duck we've got. No, I got a Hollywood mallard also. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, thank you very much. Well, that, I didn't get a duck. I got geese, though. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking about right here. No. Sarah did a great job shooting. Scott, we all we all got a great hunt in this morning. But I think MVP goes to Alex and Bob. This wouldn't happen without those guys. Bob, you're an awesome dog. All right, you guys, so here we are. We're getting ready to clean these birds. That's why I came out here. That's a bull sprig. It's a drake pintail. This is really the flagship bird out here in California. And we're in a place called KC Bar. This is where everybody brings their birds. They pluck them, they clean them, they get them ready for you. 
like we are going to be flying back to Florida tomorrow morning. And in order for us to fly with these birds, whether it be speckled belly goose or ducks, they have to have a wing on them. So I'm going to film these ladies processing my birds so y'all can see what's... Actually, I think it's cool that I get to see what's going on here. This is Miss Sherry, and she's going to show you how it's done. Guys, this is Miss June. She is absolutely fantastic. I've been sitting here watching her clean pheasants and geese and ducks and everything. There's, you could learn a lot from this lady. But uh, this is what I would like if possible. Save the tail and save the heart and the gizzard and, and you just do your magic. Thank you so much. That's awesome. So we had to leave this wing on. That's basically the way you would identify the bird. But now that's ready to go. They're going to keep cleaning the rest of our ducks. We're going to go to the store and get some ingredients. What's nice about this, these are all packaged so I can take them back to Florida with me. See that? That's perfection in a bag right there, y'all. You got your legs and thighs, this is your breast, that's your back. And here, this is what I'm after right now. That's your little bottom tail. I want to make sure there's no feathers on it. Pull that off just like that. That's full of fat. I'm going to throw it in over here. Turn it down. We want to render this down. All that fat is coming out because that is what we're going to cook our duck in. Here's a little heart. Throw that heart in there. It's going to be some seasoning. And it's going to be good. That heart will be good to eat. First thing is, got all this fat on that, on that breast. Take your knife, follow it right down. Make sure you leave the skin on. Turn this around, grab it. And we're just going to peel it right off. We're just going to play it right off. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Look how nice that is. Then you have these pretty little legs or your thighs. Same thing. Meat side, skin side. You're just going to take a little Everglades fish and chicken, just like that. I want to season this puppy up. That's all we're looking for right there. That's it. No salt, no pepper, no nothing. Just that. We've got this all rendered down. Our oil has been seasoned properly. We're going to pull all of this out of there just so our meat is not crowded. That oil is key to making this happen. We don't want to do this fast. Or we don't want to do it slow. See how it's going to tighten up? See it tighten up? Almost as soon as it tightens up, let's turn it over. There we go. 
Now we're gonna cook it again on that side. But if I would have let it cook too long on that skin side, it would have just shriveled all up. So as soon as you throw it that grease, it'll tighten up and flip it over. Then it'll cook the meat side. Then we can go to the skin side. Believe it or not, whenever I'm doing stuff like this, I like to throw it right on a paper plate because the paper plate will kind of start to absorb a little bit of the oil. Make sure you take this off the fire. We're good. Let this cool down for about five minutes. If we cut this too soon, all the juices, all that natural love will roll out of it. So let it cool down for about five minutes, and then we'll cut it. We're gonna eat it, and I can't wait to taste it. We're just gonna cut right down in the middle. You don't want it to be overcooked. See that? That's about perfect. Nice, medium honey pie. Are you excited about this? Yeah, if it tastes any near, anywhere near as good as the spec I owe. Okay, honey pie. You guys dig in and I want to hear what y'all have to say. Okay, I'm gonna wait for you guys. <gasps> Holy moly, that's hot. You first. Come on, Uncle Rocky. Is it really hot? I'm a huge fan of the legs. Mm. Mm. That's good. Oh. That's good. <laughs> so, I love the fact that it's got the skin on the breast mm -hmm. still. Man, that's just it's, it's, no. layer after layer yeah. of flavor. And then you've got those nice little legs. Mmm. Like so like when I eat ribs, I don't want ribs to be falling off the bone. I like to be able to eat it and bite it and chew it. Same thing with my wild game. Mm. See how that pulled up there? Just look. Look at the moisture in that. Steam. Every bite is so full of flavor. I like the charred outside. Mm. Like how the outside smells charred? A lot of people throw away the like. If you could describe this experience in one word, what would it be? Epic. What would be your word? Amazing. Yours? Spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> Spectacular. <laughs> Lovely. And I want to tell each and every one of you, thank you for taking the time to hang out with us tonight. Man, we just passed two million subscribers. And while we're in the duck one. While we were in the duck blind is when we passed two million subscribers. And I'm almost at a loss of words. I remember when we started thinking getting to one million subscribers was, it was, it was so far beyond my imagination. Then we hit a million. And I've never even called, I've never even applied to get my gold play button. But now to hit two million, right at the beginning of 2020, it's just a real honor. And it's because of you. Each and every one of you loving, liking, sharing, commenting, telling your friends and family about our channel. It means the world to us. Rocky, thank you for the hospitality. Scott, thank you for Salute. all your hard work and dedication. Um, I can't wait to come back, babe. I love you. Here's to a great year. And uh, three million, here we come, y'all. God bless. We gone. Whoa!